Hi guys. There's nobody there to you. But someone is going to go to police when it's uploaded. Nah. Mm -hmm. So Tina's talking to herself, please. No, I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> I know someone is going to watch the live stream and they'll be like, okay, what's going on here? But well, it's a live stream. Yeah, it's a live stream. Guys, we really apologize for the other one interruptions with our live streams. But let's wait for people to join us. We already have like seven people in. Please let us know if you can hear us as well. That is also. Did you turn up your value? Yes, I did. Mm. I did. So please let us know if you can hear us so that we can continue. It's not easy. <laughs> when we take love without doing live streams, this is what, ha what happens in first place. Okay. I think you guys can hear. Hello. Please let us know. Are we loud and clear on your side? Good evening, good evening, guys. I can hear you. Wow, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Our apologies for the disruptions earlier on. <laughs> it was really not a nice one. You know, oh, yeah. after coming back in a long, long while, <laughs> then this happens. It's not good. But we really appreciate you guys so much. The 24 people who have really joined us, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Please let us know where you're watching us from and also, you know, say hello to us as well. <laughs> My God, I'm not saying anything. People are here Say, you know, they can hear. Yes, we can. I can hear you. Okay, that's nice. Someone is watching us from Kenya. Very clear. Thank you so much. Okay, someone, Mr. Suspect is saying it's, it's his first time to, to join the live stream. He's really so happy to catch us up. Mm -hmm. I know the live stream has been really so abrupt, not announced anywhere, but the birthday man oh my is gosh. right here. We had to come to at least say hello to you guys. It's been a busy, busy time for us at Value Farm. So many things happening, but at least we had to spare some time to say hello to you guys. And also, you know, wish you guys a happy new month as well. Happy new month to you guys. Thank you for being part of Value Farm family. We love you guys. We really appreciate you guys so much. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. And without you guys, we wouldn't be motivated even to, you know, to push the farm forward. But we really appreciate all of you on all our platforms. You guys are amazing. And for those who have been really, been sharing the videos, sharing with your friends and families, guys, we can't thank you enough. We are really so grateful, very, very grateful. Yes, back the man. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> You're so quiet. That's the problem. I, 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 huh? People wish you a happy birthday. Please respond well, to them at least on the video. Thank you for all the well wishes, God, uh, everybody. The the birthday wishes were really kind. Um, they they definitely hit me. You know, it came out of left field. I was not expecting anything. I'm usually pretty low key on my birthday. I try to just like downplay it as much as possible. <laughs> but so when I got bombarded by messages, I I thought something must have been afoot. And this one, <laughs> <laughs> this one here, I posted it everywhere. Yeah. I have so to. yeah, it was a, it was definitely a cool gesture by my business partner. And the love that I received from most people was definitely a bit overwhelming. Um, so too many messages for me to reply to everyone. So we figured we would do this live stream to express my gratitude and the love and support that you guys not just showed me, but like the team, the VF family. And there's actually a lot that's happened yeah. <laughs> or within the last month that we did the last stream. So we wanted to, one, update everybody on some of those progress that we've been making and also to say thank you for all the messages and, you know, all the wonderful outreach. Thank you. <laughs> I know he was really very surprised with the messages. Very, very surprised. surprised. And he said those were the most messages he has received. The most ever. In your whole life. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. But really appreciate you guys so much for showing us so much love. People really appreciating you for, 
you know, inspiring them, being, you know, this other person who has made them to be farmers. It is really so kind of you guys, you know, to see that this man right here really inspires you to be better farmers and also to get into the farming projects. That is really amazing. Yeah. And um, if I had to dole out one piece of advice mm -hmm. to all my brothers and sisters that are watching either live or you're catching this video at a later date, let me just express to you guys the value of consistency, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, life is a tricky, you know, thing to navigate, right? Sometimes you can feel you have it all figured out and then somebody pulls the rug from under your feet. Let me give you guys an example. Um, <clears throat> the main reason why most restaurants don't ever make it and the same principles can apply to both farming and relationships, marriages, you know, you interviewing your future husband or future wife, right? I think the the most underrated ingredient in that equation has to do with consistency or lack thereof. Because um, let me give you guys an example. The other day I ordered some chicken a few days ago. I ordered some some food from this particular place. And it was I was very detailed, very specific. Yeah. And the food came. It was pretty awesome. In fact, today, I actually wanted to experience that again. So I ordered exactly the same thing, made a minor tweak to it. And then the chicken, the, the dish I ordered was so awesome from a few days ago. I actually ordered double, one for myself and some for my business partner here because we're here working late. And... When the food arrived, I was excited, as so was Tina. And let me tell you something. Same chef, same restaurant, but the food taste as if the first order was cooked by a professional chef, then the second order was cooked by a day one sous chef, right? But then you get to pay the same money, right? You're expecting consistency and quality. But then you, when you receive such a terrible experience on turn two, it erased everything that happened right the first time. So this works the same when it comes to farming, particularly when it comes to your branding, particularly when it comes to the product that you're putting out there. So if you're into the meat production, you better make sure that if, you, if you're goal is to be in that business for more than just a couple of months, right? For the long haul. You need to ensure that quality assurance is a thing for you. That you're not just trying to get somebody's money today, right? And then tomorrow, you lure them in with something of quality day one. And then day two, you just think you're just going to just send that person whatever scrap of meat you have left over and yet charge that person the same amount of money. When you do stuff like that, that's a very quick way to lose a potential lifelong customer by a lack of consistency. And ultimately, it's disrespectful to your customers, to your client base, for you to do such a thing, you know? Because when you attempt to do that to people, it's not even about the money that person is spending and not receiving the, the proper quality then it becomes a it becomes almost as if that person or that restaurant manager or owner look at you as if you're unintelligent as if you're foolish as if you you're too foolish to realize that they're trying to sneak something by you and it's the same thing we always tell you guys especially in the farm business right uganda is a big country but it's a tiny tiny country within the industry that we're in because everybody knows everybody. Mm. There's but a few, I would say a, a couple handful, I would say a, a handful of commercial farmers that are trying to go real commercial. So 
Yes, the country is large, but the circle that we're in is very, very small. So if you burn somebody today by over-promising and under-delivering, you're going to end up losing a lot more than one client. You can literally be sabotaging the entire foundational pieces for your business. You know, you could be out of business before you even start your business. You know, by not being honest and forthright with people. And I don't know, I just want to get that off my chest because I think that's one of the things I wish was a bit different mm. in this environment, in this climate, right? But that's also an opportunity for us here, the Value Farm family, right? Yeah. To actually continue to shine every day, continue to be honest and open with people, continue to share with you guys our, our trials and tribulations, whether things are good or bad, like we bring it to you raw, real, no chaser. Yeah. So you know whatever's happening here, if it's good, you're going to know about it. If it's bad, we're going to let you know about it. If we ever make a mistake, like the beginning of this stream, we apologize. <laughs> I take no blame on that one. That was Tina ah, setting up you. setting up the rig. <laughs> If, we, up this if, if you guys could see how this this rig is set up, my gosh! <laughs> Pray for Tina. <laughs> you thought I was gonna let you get away with that, oh, huh? Wow. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Why would you embarrass me in front of hey, this? Is what, this is who we are. This is behind the scenes, guys. We keep it don't real. Worry, don't yeah. worry about his words. But everything <laughs> happened because of both of us who are setting up this live stream. But hey. Eh, Sometimes I'm the farmer, not the not the tech person, not the oh, YouTuber. Wow. Ah, you always I'm just... give me advice, yeah. Okay, all right. But we really appreciate. But people are really happy to see us today. Someone is saying that newborns do not speak. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. <laughs> From your birthday, yesterday was your birthday, so today you're here. You know, talk. is that a Ugandan proverb? I don't know. I don't know where the person is coming from. It's just well, know. I guess I'm the first newborn that and came out speaking, speaking, out. and laughing and joking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, they are watching us from, you know, there's someone here watching from Chevando. That is where I almost stay, Chevando. Oh. oh, so you know exactly where Tina stayed then? No, where I grew up from. <laughs> where I grew up from, yeah. Because yeah. I stayed in Chevando, so well, that's where I grew up mm -hmm. from, from childhood. Till, you know, when I went to campus, mm -hmm. I left home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but thank you guys so much. We have so many messages right here. Someone is saying, happy birthday, Muse, well done. Hey, you're in the Muse. I, I'm going to refute the Muse, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, everyone is still wishing you happy birthday. Thank you, that everybody. Thank true. you. And of course, people are saying consistency is really very key. Integrity, mm -hmm. honesty is really key in businesses. And this applies everywhere, really. Yeah. If you don't have honesty... So, can I ask you a question as our resident Ugandan partner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why do you think people, a, a good number of our brothers and sisters that are born and raised here, mm. why do you think it's such a challenge to be consistency, partic to be consistent, particularly mm. in the integrity area? Why is that in their business practices? It depends on the situation sometimes. Uh -huh. And it depends on the person as well. Not everyone is not. Of course, you know, not everyone. It's the just same. a few. Okay, it's some people who really take advantage of others. Sometimes they want to take something from the other person. That's why they're not honest enough. And maybe they just want to take advantage of you. Maybe if they realize you have something that they cannot have, mm -hmm. or they have you have something, but they just want to take it off from you. Most people cannot be honest or cannot be, you know, truthful. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of dishonest business folks in the U.S. all across the globe. And um, also the situation of you know our background sometimes. You okay. Know, if someone is from you know, not, let me not say a poor background, but what should I say? What is the most polite way to say? I don't polite know. Polite background. Uh, uh, if it's something like polite and you know no. you want to be up that side. Sometimes people just go for people who have the money and, you know, just Can, take advantage. It's just being disorderly. Guys, let me just share something with you guys in terms of dishonesty. You know, I, I, I'm pretty proud of my professional background. Mm -hmm. I typically say I've only had a few, a couple of career positions I held in my in my 
professional life before mm -hmm. going into business for myself. One was real estate, mm -hmm. <laughs> finance, obviously. Mm -hmm. And of course now um, we're doing um, farming and I've, I've started a few other companies that's how, that have done pretty well. I've been fortunate. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, I know this is a farming channel, but we're discussing business and business opportunities here in UG. If there's any one of you out there who have ever considered getting into real estate, particularly real estate management, mm -hmm. Uganda is the, place. is the best place to be. Why? Because the majority of real estate agents slash brokers in this country mm -hmm. are some of the most, please, let me not say it. I'll give you the floor, <laughs> madam. It is the most dishonest sector in this country. I don't know how it is in Kenya, Tanzania, all over Africa or anywhere in the world, but the brokers in this country, the realtors in this country are the most dishonest people. That is the truth. No one can even come for me for this because someone can tell you there's a house. In fact, there are some pages like on TikTok, on YouTube, mm -hmm. where they advertise the houses and they give you the price, which is less to just attract people. Then when you go for viewing, the property is not that price or even the property is not even available but it is still online so there are so many scenarios here with real estate i don't know how we are going to work on that i just think big issue. if any one of you i don't care if you in mauritius i don't care if you in the seychelles and timbuktu if you come in here from malaysia anywhere mm. if you set up a, a, an authentic real estate company in Uganda and then you actually treat people with respect where you actually be intentional about being a professional mm -hmm. and that you just run an honest real estate slash real estate management company I think in very short order right if you do everything the way you're supposed to mm -hmm. you can distinguish yourself as an honest agency, you can have a massive business on your hand yes. because it's a, it's one of the sectors that it pains my heart because I know being from the U.S., becoming a realtor takes some skills. You have to be intelligent. You have to be able to demonstrate a certain level of integrity in order for you to get into the business and a less certain level of professionalism to be in the business now not saying every realtor or every brokerage in america is honest because there are shady people out there too mm -hmm. but if you were to speak to a hundred real estate agents in uganda i think out of a hundred you might find point zero zero two five percent not even a full percent right not even i would say out of a hundred you'll find 0.0001% that might be 50% honest with you. Forget integrity, forget fiduciary responsibility. These people just lie about everything. And for a country that's developing, that's growing, there are two things you, we can never make more of, apart from, you know, yes, we can improve technology to grow more food, you know, on, on small plots of land, that's possible, yeah. but we can't grow more land, yeah. right? So in a country that's growing, the population is exploding, projected to be more than 75 to 100 million um, residents in UG by the year 2030, if I'm not mistaken. The food sector and real estate sector works hand in hand, yeah. right? And sh kudos to uh, a sister that I actually saw that was featured on the Odana Network down in Ghana. She actually left the U.S. and actually opened up an integrity-based real estate company in Ghana, and now she's thriving. She actually works with celebrities, investors from all over the globe. If one of you out there actually have that experience, even if you don't, you can easily get licensed back home or learn the business, and you come here to Uganda and you actually set up a real, a true real estate company, you can find yourself being a multi-billionaire 
within a few short years because everybody's looking for a good agent and they just don't exist here. And if they do, when you meet them, it's almost impossible to believe anything they say to you. I live by one rule. The moment one of these guys tell, they, tell me or Tina that they're an agent or a broker, I automatically block them on my phone. I don't want to talk to them because no matter how many of them you try, they that just lie. I, I give you guys <laughs> an example, right? These guys will lie to you about checkable uh, like, let me give you guys an example. If you get in the car with an agent mm -hmm. to go show you a property from or time. land, right? Yeah. You can ask them, so how far from the main road? The default answer is going to be? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Tina. What's the default answer? If you ask the agent in yeah. Uganda, how far, how far is this from the, so from the, thank you. It's not far. Mm -hmm. And then when you say, okay, well, what's not far? It, uh, one kilometer, yes. two kilometers. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Tell the people. I don't know why you're trying to be polite. Tell the people. Because you used to be an agent, <laughs> one of the few honest ones I'm around. Still an agent. Exactly. <laughs> but but please, explain to the people. No, the thing is, most of these people really lie. If it's maybe seven kilometers, just add more. Five. If they tell you five kilometers away from the main road, it's like 15 to 20. 20. And then no matter how, and then we're like, wait, wait, I thought you said this was like far, five, five kilometers. Mm. Like, ah, it's not that far. It's just right here. You, yes. we, but my favorite, you've already reached, <laughs> but yet you have 30 more minutes to go. That's what we deal with here in Uganda. I had to get that off my chest. You see, <laughs> as you get older, man, you just you just you just have to keep keep it coming. Yes, really is a yeah, just, just 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 let it go. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. But of course, now people who are looking for land, especially in Uganda, people who are moving here, and you know, most of you are really interested. Even people who have lived in Uganda, but you're looking for farmland. You're looking for where you can invest something. You need to be very careful with whoever you're dealing with because there's a lot of people who are really taking advantage of people who are buying land of late. You go, you don't really do your due diligence, and you get robbed. So this is really very common. I've got so many people who have reached out and, you know, they've lost money. So it's not a good thing for you to take things for granted. And when they pressurize you to always buy like real quick, mm -hmm. be careful. <laughs> that is a red flag. The hot potato is going to get you into the grease. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When you go and view land somewhere and they tell you, okay, please pay because there are so many people who want this land. It's so prime. It's going, in fact, tomorrow. There's another buyer coming tomorrow. That pressure, do not fall for it. Because, you walk away. Yeah, because that is another way for you to, you know, be pressured to pay the money, then someone disappears. But it's really very common. Take your time, get your lawyers if you can, do your checks. So that at least go even to the, to the site yourself without anyone so that you can know exactly who the owner is, who the people, the local chairperson, the leaders around the place are so that you can get the rightful land. But if you rush, it's going to be on you. It's going to really frustrate you when you yeah. know that you bought land that is not even in existence. It's a very painful experience that many people have experienced. Yeah. But I feel more that's f more so common. Mm -hmm. And it's far more common in a lot of other different parts of Africa mm -hmm. than here in Uganda. Yes, people can get taken anywhere because it even happens in America, yeah. believe it or not. But in this country, you definitely still have to do your due diligence because, you know, if you're going to run a car, ch car fax check on a vehicle, yeah. a used car you're going to buy, if you're going to purchase land which is far more valuable than a car, mm -hmm. you should definitely take your time to do the due diligence and actually talk to your neighbors, get to know what's really happening on the ground before you actually give anybody any money. But actually, speaking of farmland, I actually had this conversation with you and and uh, Yasin, mm -hmm. aka Mass Man, I would say like maybe like 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. And then I reiterated the same sentiment about four months ago, where I remember when we first found our VF farmland, like a lot of people thought it was so deep into the village, it was so far away. Yeah, true. And at the time, I kept on telling both of you and anybody yeah. who's willing to listen that in Uganda, with the way things are growing 
in terms of the population, in terms of people migrating here, there are several unrest in other parts of the continent. People are finding safe haven here. You know, unfortunately what's happening in South Sudan, but it's not just there, right? We actually have a different type of migrants that are actually looking for refuge. Yeah. It's not just people that are displaced by political unrest. It's not for, you know, religious persecution. We actually now have climate change migrants. That is true. And what do I mean by that? We actually have a large swath of people that are vacating, even migrating from within the country, right? Where the climate has changed and the weather has become too unpredictable to continue to farm like the olden days. Yeah, true. But what's even more common these days is that we have so many of our brothers and sisters migrating from Kenya to yeah. Uganda because there's definitely a prolonged drought that's been in Kenya that's been persisting for the past now going on eight plus years now. Yeah. And Uganda is definitely blessed. But in addition to people coming in, buying up huge swath of farmland, there's also a lot of real estate development happening in areas that used to be once called villages. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those villages, farmers are selling their farmlands to massive real estate developers. And land that you used to think back then was expensive, right? And a lot of people were like, oh, that's so cheap. Mm -hmm. But now you go back to the same area, you can't even get one quarter of a plot for the same price you used to buy an acre of land two years ago, right? True. But what's even more remarkable, you have actual villages where people are now selling a 50 by 100 plot of land mm -hmm. for 60 million shillings. 60 million shillings, you're looking at at least $17,000, not for an acre of land, just, 50 by just a 50 by 100. Yeah. And here's the part that blew my mind today. Mm -hmm. If you go to that place and that plot is available on a Monday and you think you're going to go home and come back next week, you're going to ponder, you're going to do, guess what? You're going to come back next Monday. Yeah, it's either going to be gone mm -hmm. or the person who purchased it for 60 million mm -hmm. this week Monday is gonna look to sell you the same piece of land yeah. for about a hundred million. Tack on an extra ten thousand plus dollars into that land. Mm -hmm. So that's what's really happening. That is true. So there's no more villages in Uganda. So for those of you out there that's been sitting on the fence, that's thinking like, oh, I have three more years to retire. I'm waiting for my retirement package. Then I'm gonna come back to Uganda. Let me tell you, this is not it's your like grand. Changing. This is not your grandfather's Uganda anymore, mm -hmm. because villages now are becoming the hot spot. A lot of people don't want to stay in Kampala. They want to go somewhere where they can actually have a reprieve from the Kampala madness. So they're going 30 minutes away into the suburbs. That is true. That you guys call the village. That is true. <laughs> they're going up to an hour. Sometimes an hour and 20 minutes away mm -hmm. from Kampala. So we're talking pristine land that are being scooped up by developers for cheap. So then the longer you guys wait, <laughs> the more expensive the reentry for you guys coming back home, even to find a plot for you to build your house that you want to retire in. You guys need to just think about getting in right now and don't worry about how far your land is from the capital mm -hmm. because the country population is growing okay. so fast. That's you true. might have a farm today and a city might erect around your farm in like two to three years. That's happened in multiple places here true. in Uganda. And the thing is, I think it's just the mindset that has really changed mm -hmm. of late. Because before, most people were coming to town, migrating to town. Most people like to live so that is a reverse center. migration. But now it is reverse. Most people are preferring to buy land, like in villages, a bit further from the city, mm -hmm. so that because now the city is really congested. That is too much. It is very, very congested. There's, There's no, no roads. Space. 
and even the plots that are within town, within Kampala, oh. are very are subdivided. Yeah. So you don't have any compound. The people who had very many, like a large compound, have even now divided to exactly. Other. Yeah. <laughs> because the money I've is sweet. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> the money is sweet. Yeah. I actually saw <laughs> someone put up a six-story building uh-huh. within the compound <laughs> to turn it to rental. That's and guess exactly. what? People rent. And they, they, they charge you rent at USD. That is so true. And then people are renting it. Mm. So Should I tell you something I've never told you? Please, tell the world. Our home that I grew in, <laughs> from me and Joe, uh-huh. we had a good car for me, had mm. our home. But you yeah. know what my uncle did? He put up a building. Yes, a flat. <laughs> <laughs> hey! And I bet you that flat is worth paying for everything now. Of course, now, yeah. of course, now we have people who are not renting mm. on the other side, which is really true. So... But now people are buying outside. If you go, if you have land now, for people who are not really aware about this, especially people who are in the city, and you have your your land maybe in the village, in the village that they've forgotten about, they've forgotten about. They don't it. even want to go see. Exactly, because mm-hmm. we just heard from some friend of ours who told us about a family of people who are in the city, or maybe they're in the diaspora, but they have land in the village. But they don't know the value of the land right now. They don't know the development. They're selling it at fifty percent off. Exactly, they're selling it at a very low price. They even don't know the value around that. But guess area. what? The brokers who know the price uh-huh. will never tell them the truth. Exactly. They rather try to buy it for themselves mm-hmm. and then subdivide and flip. That is so true. So if you have land, go back and see the at least evaluate it. At least see the surrounding, how it's developing. Because now at least. We have so many villages with who have access to electricity, mm-hmm. to water. Same to the village, our village there in where the farm is. Yeah. The time we went, the very ah, first time. At the time, there was no electricity. Huh? There was no electricity. <laughs> there was no water. Exactly. Now electricity is all around. Exactly. Um, yes, you can still drill drill a well or borehole for those of you. They they call it different things, but it's the same thing. Yeah. And um, even now, national water. Is coming up. It's already coming to that side. So, once the road actually gets paved, Mm -hmm. the value of that land goes up by three to four hundred, sometimes five hundred percent. So, for those of you that are being cute, that are like Mm -hmm. tapping, yeah, dilly dallying (laughs) around the idea, Mm -hmm. listen, as farmers, as future farmers, as those of you who appreciate the, the, the Lord's work that we do, that you will ultimately end up doing in the future, you have to be mindful that when you are a farmer, in fact, let me give you guys another real world example that I experienced. I grew, I, you guys know I'm from the US. I actually, over the past seven plus years, I would say the past eight years almost, I, I call Florida my home in Orlando, however, there are other there are other neighborhoods in our, in in Florida, in Central Florida in particular. Those of you who are in the states, you know, Florida has been outside of California, right? Even including California, before the frost of 1992, 1995, Florida was like the number one place that produced orange mm. for Florida Orange, right? Which is a huge company back home. And and there are places like Winter Garden, and I know I'm I'm really going deep like Winter Garden, places like um, oh my gosh, um, uh, Winter Garden, uh, man, I it's I'm just drawing blanks. Uh, Windermere, Win, Winter Garden, other surrounding areas that were nothing but farmland, particularly Winter Garden where. We have a home where well, we had a home there, right? So Winter Garden itself used to be one of the biggest strawberry groves in the whole region. We had oranges and we had strawberries. Let me tell you something. When we when they when Florida experienced that that the frost, meaning the temperature dropped below certain yeah. a certain degree, most of the orange trees ended up dying. They didn't recover. And a lot of the blueberry, strawberry patches that used to really generate the majority of the income for those farmers just went away like that, right? Do you know right now 
in an area initially when the farmers started selling their land because it would have taken too long to replant orange trees and they just wanted to just, a lot of them the kids didn't want to get into farming and you know make a long story short they just decided let's cut our losses let's just liquidate some of the land at that time back in 2007 2010 you could have purchased up to five acres of land in Winter Garden, Florida, Claremont, which is right next to Winter Garden, Florida. We're talking like maybe $5,000 an acre. Wow. Maybe at times like $3,000. Eat like places like right now in Lehigh Acres in Florida, mm -hmm. right? Like six, seven years ago, you could have purchased an acre of land for, I would say, maybe $15,000. Right, that's because Lehigh Acres is developing at a at a fast rate, but in Winter Garden back then, you could have just got it for three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, somewhere along there. Do you know? By two thousand and fifteen, to purchase just a plot, to build a, a a normal single family house there, that land had gone up to, in many cases, you can get the same. Just a small plot from $75,000 mm -hmm. up to $100,000 plus wow. in those areas. The average home you used to be able to buy in Claremont, Florida, mm -hmm. this was all farmland, mm -hmm. right? For like $120,000, $180,000 for like a five bedroom, three bedroom house, mm -hmm. new farmland that was developed, right? Yeah. Now in Claremont, you can't find a house there for less than six, five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars, guys. Yes, we're in Africa. Yes, it may take additional years for it to happen here. Mm -hmm. I never in a million years could have imagined in my neighborhood where we live now. Mm -hmm. There are homes here that need to be torn down because they're so old and shabby looking. But if you want to buy just the plot that home is sitting on. Unless you have at least 300,000 US, don't pick up the phone to call the owner because they're going to laugh you off the block. And so what a lot of these other young professionals find themselves doing, they are going where? To the village. What they used to call the village, like Mokono, like Garuga, Garuga. <laughs> what are some of the others? Um, Gayaza was a village. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I remember when my dad bought land that side. Mm -hmm. No, I remember. I I remember. I how much was it at the time? I don't know how much he bought it. We mm -hmm. were really young. They so, probably laughed at him because they exactly, thought he was so deep in the sticks. Exactly. Even still, mm -hmm. when we moved from, because we first stayed in in Zambia, and Zambia mm -hmm. was a little developed. Yeah. Then we went to Chevando. Yeah. By the time we moved to Chevando here, mm -hmm. you saw. I showed you when we yeah, were passing yeah, yeah, yeah. by how it is really congested. Yeah, yeah. It used to be a village. There were <laughs> very few houses there then. Yeah. You understand? But right now it is really super congested. Then he bought land in Gayaza. Mm. I remember that time. After buying Chevron, no, he built the house. Then he bought land in Gayaza. But I remember everyone thought it was crazy. It uh -huh. was a village. But now is Gayaza village? No way. You've been there. No way. In fact, to get like a, a quarter acre plot in Gayaza, mm -hmm. You're gonna need at least for thirty-five to forty thousand mm -hmm. USD. Exactly. At least. Don't let somebody start a structure there, mm -hmm. because even though you need to tear that structure down, they're gonna tack in an extra thirty thousand. Exactly. So yeah. So for those of you that have been thinking about starting a farm, it's multi-purpose, right? Yes, you wanna use it to grow food. You wanna use it for livestock. But this is nothing new. This happens in Australia. This has happened in the UK. This has happened all over in Spain. Live alone, live in Kampala. Imagine Luero. Yeah. Uh, like it is the a develop. Oh the my gosh. In Luero right now. It's in. It's unbelievable. Exactly. And whenever you go to purchase land or maybe check out some few plots of land, people are like, oh, someone from Kampala is already it's already so already the owner. <laughs> the owner. Yeah. People already purchasing like yeah. deep in the villages. Deep. Exactly. And now, like, also with the tourism, most people prefer to get out of the city. They want the echo lodges in exactly. the village, on the mountainside, you know, to escape from the mayhem. From the mayhem. So instead of going to Ginger, the other people who are going to the West, 
within the central as mm, well. That's so true. people are really utilizing these villages so much. As long as it has a good view, it has a good area. Even Chichusa. Exactly. Zero Chichusa, way. Zero way. Those are no longer villages. They're no longer villages, but people had land there. These are like ancestral homes for people. Mm -hmm. If you go to places like burial sites, you've seen them. Yeah, of but, course. You know, the groups are being moved. Moved. <laughs> <laughs> extricated being moved exactly because the money they're offering is too great too great within the city because the development is really expanding everywhere so for people who are there and you think like okay i'm going to die in the city i'm going to be here i'm going to work for my salary right here do something for yourself at least go somewhere and you know put purchase your small piece of land somewhere in the village even you if you, even if you don't see where the money is coming from for you to build mm. <laughs> listen as long as you have the land you're gonna win yeah, true. As long, that's the thing about land, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you have the land and you have time on your side, you're going to win. And if you yourself don't personally win, it will absolutely benefit your family. Yeah. It would add to your overall legacy. So think about that for the future. Yeah, you know? So true. Any other questions here? Well, someone was saying that. Could you explain more about the business environment and respect? Of laws in Uganda, please. What's the person's name? Um, Brazilian. We don't have an opportunity to get straight information about Uganda, please. Call okay, George. So, George, the business environment in Uganda is actually pretty straightforward. So, you can register your company in a multiple multitude of ways, right? You can register your company and have it be recognized as a foreign entity. What does that mean? You, as a Brazilian uh, citizen or natural born Brazilian. If you own the majority shares in your company as a Brazilian, though the company is registered here in Uganda, they're going to look at the company as a foreign entity. However, do the, 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 the laws on the books will actually set so that foreigners can come into the country and actually they would encourage partnership, local partnership with, with local Ugandans, right, as a way for you as a foreign investor to benefit, but also create opportunity for local people here on the ground. Because most of the other countries around the globe, right, a lot of our folks from the diaspora that have the money, they can just come in, buy up all the land, you know, get into all of the plush industries and leave the local people behind, where foreign money can come in and just own everything and the local people are left with pretty much very little. So if you partner with a local Ugandan, Right. If that local Ugandan have that one share that gives them majority stake in the company, for example, for the purpose of operating the business on the ground for ease of access to either capital opportunity for expansion, that would then have your company be recognized as a local entity by partnering with a Ugandan. You can all you can actually end up buying land through your company. You can also lease land through your company by actually having that type of partnership, right? Now, you have to be careful mm -hmm. because not everybody's honest. Yeah, you know, you don't necessarily have to partner with one Ugandan. You could end up partnering with a plethora of folks, right, in order to protect yourself. And so there are ways to make sure that you run that business in accordance with the law. But the business environment here especially my Brazilian brothers, you know what meat production can do for you. Because some of the biggest meat producers in the world, as a matter of fact, a, a large number of meat that is being sold even in the United States of America is actually being processed in Brazil. So the environment is fine. The water is warm. You just have to do your due diligence you know, visit, get on the ground. Don't give anybody any money until you hear, no matter how nice they sound, <laughs> no matter whose mommy's in the hospital, you have to make sure you touch down here first. True. You meet that person face to face, and then you can decide whether or not after some time, okay, you don't have to be in a rush. You might have to come here once, twice, two or three times before you make the decision that you want to actually, you know, yeah. live and you can make the commitment to be in a foreign country such as this, where you're going to be without some of your home comforts here. Mm -hmm. 
But if you can overcome that, the opportunities are bountiful, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, and the truth is, when someone is moving to Uganda for the first time, it may be a little bit tricky. It'll be a shock to the system. <laughs> I can't, don't, don't, sh my, my partner here is going to sugarcoat it for you. It will be a shock to the system that when you get so here true. first. Because some, I don't know how I began the, the topic of conversation today, because we were speaking to our new partners here on the ground, the Jobs family, right? We were actually having lunch, and then, you know, we were just having just a normal conversation. Yeah. I just recall when I first came here, and even Tina noticed, mm -hmm. like my first visit into UG to establish this business relationship, yeah. I was definitely not as comfortable as I was when I came for the second time. Second time because yeah. when I got off the plane, I was not ready for what I saw. You understand? Mm -hmm. Not saying it was anything bad, but it was definitely different. You know, the road conditions, you know, seeing roadblocks. Like, these are not things you see around Disney in Orlando, Florida. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for you guys, though you may love the idea, you romanticize the idea of coming back to the continent, we would strongly urge you to actually come and visit. And don't come to visit during, during the time where it's like, you know, carnival season or party season what, what, what's what's the time December and this like no, no. you you come here doing like August September when there's nothing going on mm -hmm. and you catch the actual rhythm and flow of the country the people and then you leave and then you come back and if it still resonates with you even more while you're away from here yeah. then you know you found yourself a new home you know, but that's that's definitely what I would what I would urge you guys to, to do. But in terms of opportunities, opportunities guys, let me tell you something. I was just thinking about this the other day. Mm -hmm. Right now, wherever you are, this is an easy test for you to consider, I guess, moving back to the continent and considering East Africa as a whole. Just think about whatever country you in. Whether you're in the Netherlands, Jamaica, wherever, there's always a dominant player in an industry where you are. Whether you're in Brazil, meat processing, soy, soy production, you know, sugarcane product, sugar production. And in the US, like there are many sectors that's just so saturated, you can't even contemplate entering that space. Whether in Uganda, there are no dominant players in any industry. And, what's, and, what's, and, and, what's and, and, and and even the ones that you consider to be dominant might have 3 to 5% market share. I just want you to think about that. Yeah. So before you take your money and open the million and 25th restaurant in New York City, consider coming to Uganda to open that restaurant. You understand? Consider going to Kenya or Rwanda. And instead of you breaking your neck, deciding whether or not you want to open a daycare center mm -hmm. in Staten Island or Long Island or somewhere in LA where you're going to spend like five years getting all the licenses you need, consider coming to do that somewhere here in UG because the opportunities are bountiful. You know, I just want you guys to also think about, I always say this, I always preach this, when you think about processing, I just want you guys out there. I don't know if you guys can hear my voice. Yes, they can hear But let me make sure you guys understand this clearly. Loud and clear. We all love ice cream. I love ice cream. You love ice cream. Even though you might be lactose intolerant. There are people in your family who love ice cream. Guys, there are in Uganda, we don't have a dominant ice cream creamery that exists in Uganda for mass ice cream production. I just want you to wrap your mind around a country which the climate is warm year round with over 50 million people here. And the only time you can get real ice cream is by going to a handful of high-end cafes and restaurants in the capital of Uganda. There's no haagen no. There's no Ben and Jerry's. You'll find those in Kenya. Yeah, but they don't have. exist here in Uganda. No, and, and don't get me wrong. There are local players in the market trying to make it, but the quality, 
is severely lacking. Severely lacking. So if you are an artisan, if you have the skills, you should really, really get off the fence and get your behind to Uganda. And here's an APB, mm -hmm. an all call out. If you are someone out there who have experience in meat processing, particularly sausage making, if you are a food scientist with at least three years of experience, please reach out to us at We Value Farming 626 at Gmail. Because we need your skills, we need to talk, whether it's for consultation or you being on the ground, because we are scaling our operation and we need skilled people to join us on this journey of expansion. I thank you. <laughs> Guys, just give us a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I just, I just no, have is, to tell I my people. We, yeah, we take long to come and talk to them like one-on-one -on -one uh, things because these are really very important points for anyone out there who wants to do investment and you, and you who wants to do things here in Uganda. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's okay. Let me tell you something. I know there are millions of people out there mm. in America alone, mm. even like for example, my my artisan cheese makers. And I know we've said this before. We need people that could just do the basics. The basics just think yeah. about how lucrative the dairy industry is. Yes. Right? We're talking cheese, ice cream. We don't have anything. Like this country produced, the local Uncoli cows here in yeah. Uganda produce some of the best quality milk you will ever taste in your life. As a matter of fact, that milk, has such incredible, like fat to milk and water content. It's to the point where the milk, if you literally just get the raw milk from the farm mm. and you bring it home and you put it in your refrigerator, yeah. the next morning half the bottle is already cream. That is true. Automatic. You don't have to do nothing to it. Like you don't have to. You just put it in the refrigerator, and then half the bottle, like three at least, I would say at least half, a quarter, minimum of a quarter to a half that bottle is going to be filled with cream, that natural cream from the Uncoli cow. That milk is so delicious. It's so nutritious. When you drink that milk, I even the first time I bought that milk, true story, I thought, <laughs> I, I thought the pot I boiled the milk in had oil in it. Yeah. Because the butter, like I was like, is that grease? Why is there grease in this milk? And it was just the natural cream, like the natural, actual fats in that milk. And there's no one making real ice cream. Except for, I can name, Tina, name the companies here in Uganda that actually make real ice cream. Let's go. Cafe Siri. Caramel. Caramel. Oh yummies. A look at that three and every one of those i mentioned restaurants and cafe yeah. there's one that's a bakery and then yeah two restaurants and one bakery the others are just mostly like shops kiosks. Yeah. but with the quality that can't I even you, quality. you can't put them in the same class as cafe that's, series that's true. caramel or yummies that's true. so if you are someone out there that have those skills and you could be like the third or fourth person in your company being disrespected by your boss or working for a boss that you know you despise. You get yourself a plane ticket. Come you come to Uganda. Come find yourself. Come reinvent yourself and truly grab destiny by the horn. And let, let's, let's build an ice cream empire. You know? Like these are the things that are just wide open. Think about Ben and Jerry's. Those guys are multi-millionaires making basic ice creams that we all love. Don't get me wrong, coming out of Nantucket, I get it, you know? But it's open in Uganda. I don't know what else I can say, Remember you know? like the, the yogurt that we first saw from Kenya? Delamere. No, not Delamere. 
Yeah, that's where I knock him to. Bio. Bio. Oh my gosh. Guys, great point, partner. That's why you that's why you're the best partner. <laughs> when we went to Kenya, we kept on asking to our we kept I kept on asking, how come Kenya have all the good stuff in Uganda in terms of dairy? We're severely limited. So everything from yogurt to cheese to ice cream, all the big brands are in Kenya. But then when you come over to Uganda, you find two dominant um, yogurt yeah. companies. Jessa. Jessa and Fresh <laughs> Dairy. And then apart from that, right, you there are a lot of other smaller players in the in the industry. Okay. You know, like Mama, but 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 thing. but they truly companies that people recognize here mm -hmm. is Fresh Dairy and Jessa. Now Bio yogurt costs five times, if not ten times more money than what we have here locally in Uganda. Yeah. Yet they are exporting bio from Kenya to Uganda. And I can tell you, since I discovered bio yogurt in Kenya, I have <laughs> refused to eat the local Ugandan yogurt because it's simply subpar. Not saying they can't improve. And that's why competition is great. You understand? Competition is wonderful. Because if you're somebody out there from Fresh Dairy or from Jessa, and then you know, you know, uh, bio's cleaning your clock, then step up your game or get out of the kitchen. And you know how it really runs out from the supermarket? Very fast. It's so sad though, right? Because like a, a, a container mm -hmm. of Fresh Dairy yogurt is like 2000 it could be between 2000 shillings to maybe 2500 yeah but then the medium size the small size the big size of fresh dairy mm -hmm. is 2500 mm -hmm. the small size oh, of bio is like 10 8000 like and then the big one like there's no the same normal size one mm -hmm. right goes for 60 to 17,000 Ugandan shillings. And yet, in a market where people think, oh, these the local people here don't buy expensive things. They want cheap, cheap, cheap. It's so untrue. People want quality. If you have quality, people will spend the money. They will keep coming back to you because of quality. I don't know how the, 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 the powers that be just came to the conclusion that they just that the local people here just want of what they cheap call affordable mm -hmm. and cheap things, which is the biggest misnomer about Uganda. Because guess what? When I'm driving or if I'm sitting in traffic here in Uganda, I'm seeing Range Rovers that cost well over a hundred thousand USD on the streets of Kampala. I'm true. seeing Q7s, the, the, the newest version in Kampala. In Kampala. I'm seeing the noise Mercedes Benz and BMWs here in Kampala. And you guys don't think these folks, if it's something of quality, they, would go for it. they will save their money and actually make an investment in quality versus quantity? It's about time. And Things are changing, by the way. Very quickly. Yes, people are now, you know, changing that mindset, you know, for cheap, for quality. Yeah. Like, people go for quality instead of going for quantity, mm -hmm. most cases. Yeah. Then, people would go for, you know, large numbers, something that is really in more quantities than quality. But right now, with the competition, you mm. know, everyone wants to live a good life. If you're a competitor, mm. and let me give you guys another one. Yes. One that I, even you didn't see this coming. Which one? There's a company here called Game. They were basically like Best Buy meet Walmart in America. But Game, because of whatever the reason, they decided to actually sell in Uganda. Same thing with ShopRite. And they, they decided to, I think, expand their market operation down in South Africa or other parts of they the continent. South Africa, right? From South Africa. Yeah. So, if you are someone who enjoy making children clothing... You want to provide clothing, toys, right? Electronics. Electronics for children, sneakers, everything a child could need. Imagine motherhood, okay? As an example, for lack of better, just imagine motherhood 
stores in America, mm -hmm. Uganda need these stores because in a country, one of the most fertile countries on the whole continent, right? There are no players in that space. So if you decide to come to Uganda and you open a children's store or a mother-to-be store, my gosh, you can just print the cash while you're sleeping because there's no competition. The only recognizable player in that space has decided to sell, go back to South Africa. Let me tell you something about game before. Game was a, a supermarket where you could go and get genuine electronics. The real stuff. The real stuff. So anyone who would tell you, oh, this fridge is from game, this TV is from game, mm -hmm. everyone would know that it's that real. is real. Even yeah. after they sold out and maybe things went on market, mm -hmm. people are now reselling the things they mm -hmm. got from the from from, game. Mm -hmm. Someone would tell you, this is from game. This And you know it is something of quality. It is something that... You know, that is going to last, not something. And it was, of course, expensive by then. Of when course. you go there, you know that you're getting something. You pay for the you real pay stuff. For the real stuff. A lot of money, but you get something that is really real. So when they closed, people are not even doubting what to go to. Oh. So we are now going for what is available. Mm. Huh? You know how we went to the shopping for the TV, yeah. for what, and yeah. things weren't easy. Yeah. It is really very difficult. Of course, companies are there that are genuine, but we are not sure. Most people are not really very contented with where they're going to buy these electronics, especially washing machines. Because people are now upgrading. People who used to use hand washing. Hey. Yeah? <laughs> Most people are now buying washing machines here. Yeah. I know we're a little bit behind, but you know, with the upgrades. But it's exciting though, isn't it? It's exciting because things are now coming in. People are now seeing what is on internet from other countries and want to also have that same lifestyle here. I, though we are quite limited. I know? blame the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> 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 wow that is interesting but yes people are really upgrading with the lifestyle with everything that they're using here so if someone comes here and finds an opportunity to grab they're available a lot i just give so much free advice mm -hmm. guys mm -hmm. just reach out to uh, reach out to me seriously mm -hmm. but to again reiterate mm -hmm. sausage makers mm -hmm. artisans in fact, one last thing. If you are someone out there yeah. with actual baking experience, if you are someone in New York, Brooklyn, Queens, that knows how to make bagels and pretzels, please reach out to me. Come to Uganda because I've been here now for a little over two years. Guys, I have not had a real bagel since I've been in Uganda. It's the saying, if you know, you know. So for those of you that are bagel lovers like me, mm -hmm. have you ever had a bagel, Tina? Yeah. Do you know what a bagel is? I don't know. There you go. <laughs> but there are a lot of foreign folks like I myself mm -hmm. that are from Europe, that are from the U.S., mm -hmm. We're here in this wonderful country. There are no bagels around. There are no authentic donut shops that I'm aware of okay. around. Are there any donut shops that you know of that are around? What kind of donut shops? The you actual the donuts hands. that with actually, the yeah, the, 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 yeah, the with donuts the with the hole in there. Yeah, yes. yeah. Have but like I guess I bet you I I bet you there's no Krispy Kreme. There's no there are no artisanal donut makers in Uganda. I rest my case. For those of you who you know, you know exactly the opportunities that are before you. Last one. Which one? There are a ton of folks here that the moment they move to Uganda. The idea of having real pizza just fades away from your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone that have actual experience in making real pizza, please come to Uganda mm -hmm. because we need you here. That's all I have to say. Let's talk about duck farming. Woo! 
I'll let I'll let you take that away. Go no, ahead. with duck farming, it's it's like most people in Uganda, we do rare ducks, but in a small scale. <laughs> Secretly. Secretly, but it's not something that we put our hearts and minds to here. But I remember Grafton when he first came here, he was like, Oh my god, I love duck duck eggs. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Why do you like duck eggs? Like in Uganda, we don't really eat duck eggs. At all. <laughs> we prefer the chicken eggs, maybe turkey sometimes, but duck eggs, we don't even use them. We just, you know, fry them, maybe they just hatch, and that is it for home consumption. <laughs> but there are farmers here who just started, I think that they're, they're numbered. Mm -hmm. There are a few farmers like who are two. like two farmers mm -hmm. who are doing it commercially. But this is really a very profitable business or farming project someone can start after me learning from Grafton. Before, I had no idea. And this is an opportunity because <laughs> that, because when I also researched about the duck eggs, how benefit It's more nutritious, it's bigger, but ducks Uganda, are hardier. Exactly, but in Uganda, someone even eating duck, mm -hmm. it's like a taboo. Mm. People were like, ah, eating duck meat. What is that? Yet there's a large population of Asians here who are looking out for dark meat and they can't find it. Not just the Asian folks. There are a lot of folks here from the Netherlands, mm. a lot of folks here from Canada, from France, from Germany, from Italy, from Sweden. Guess what? We all within those regions, we love both duck meat mm. and duck eggs. Just like our, our partner, Stephen's wife, mm. was ex ex expounding yeah. to you the other day yeah, that being from the Netherlands, like one of their favorite cut of meat, one of their favorite type of meat to eat is meat. duck mm -hmm. and lamb. Yeah. And Uganda, the local Ugandan folks, they don't eat lamb. They don't eat sheep. Yeah, like sheep is like, eh. They so don't. what they do, they mix with the goats. However... <laughs> If you are a farmer who's interested in getting into sheep farming, mm. you make the market. You don't have to build. Don't think about the country in terms of you needing to actually grow or cater your farming to 50 million people because you can't feed 50 million people on your farm, right? You're just not able to. But you can cater to 300,000, to a million people. Mm. And if you end up with like at least 500 to 1,000 people that you can call your customers that actually appreciate authentic lamb and ultimately mutton meat itself, you're gonna find yourself a nice niche, completely unabated, no competition, and you can again print your cash while doing something that you care about. That you true. know, there are many people in this country that just copy what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And the reason most farmers end up failing. Is because there's someone, there are so many farmers that are meant to be good farmers yeah. that are in poultry because poultry <laughs> just it. seems easy. easy. They're like, oh, before you get, before you get into good farming, uh -huh. which is what they grew up doing, uh -huh. they know like the back of their hand, but they see the neighbor down the street with like 5,000 birds and the trays of eggs <laughs> are constantly leaving. <laughs> so the good farmer that knows nothing about poultry farming is doing no. what? Poultry. They're not poultry farm. Okay. And they don't know the feed ratios. They don't know how to care for the birds. And guess what? They'll put their last savings into starting our poultry farm and to only end up failing. Now, you don't want to see that. The purpose of this message is to find your passion within yeah. the space. And you don't necessarily have to open a farm to be involved in the agro sector. Yeah. Right? You can definitely get into processing, be a juice, even bottling water. You know, there are so many different ways you can enter. You can find yourself fitting within that chain. But most people here, they just see someone doing something. If it, it looks successful, they don't have a <laughs> business plan. They don't know anything. They're just like, hey, I can make money doing this. He's doing that. And he's driving a double cabin. <laughs> That's it. All hopes. Abandoned ship. And, and that person could be a brilliant yeah. Um, farmer, in terms of crop management, they, they could grow the best. No one can, can teach that person any better how to grow passion fruit or papaya. 
These are things that they're experts in. Yeah, they know about. But then they don't see how to commercialize that. So they just find a person doing something that they feel like, wow, uh, they're is. making money here. Mm -hmm. Let me do the same. And it doesn't have to be like that. You know, as we talk about duck farming, mm -hmm. as we talk about sheep farming, sheep farming, believe me, when you go to the supermarket now, Sheep meat, mutton and lamb meat is being sold for way more money than goat meat, yeah, sure. than beef. That is so it has gained its position in the world of, in the, in the country, where the locals think that sheep meat is taboo. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Jay. Thank Appreciate you. the love. Mm -hmm. um, where people would see that eating sheep is taboo, taboo, but then the market is gonna dictate what the market is gonna dictate. The consumers that are buying the sheep meat are telling you they want the sheep meat. <laughs> but if you speak to a local Ugandan, Ugandan. Ugandan, what kind of farming do you wanna do? Ah, poultry. Ah, you know, I was thinking about rabbit and all these other things that have a high entry point that they don't really they understand. But then just raising sheep mm -hmm. and the local sheep here in Uganda, they, the, the original gangsters of the small ruminants mm -hmm. or the local Ugandan <laughs> sheep, those sheep are so tough. So handy. Let me tell you something. We I actually had one that had a very terrible accident. In fact, it actually had to be amputated. Yeah. But because it was one of the first female sheep that we purchased, I simply did not have the heart to put her down. I said, you know what? Let's let's perform the, the, the procedure. Let's see how the sheep manage. Since the loss of that limb, that sheep has produced at least six limbs on three legs, hopping around. The One of the best moms that we have, some of the best lambs that we get is from that one sheep. And so our flock is growing. You know, we're going to have an update on that real soon. Yeah, sure. The doppers are doing fine. Yeah. I want to say a special thank you to my partner, Simon. I wish you would have silenced that. Mm -hmm. to, to, our, to, our, to our partner, Simon, who's in Australia. Mm -hmm. He actually did a joint venture with Value Farm with our doper operation. Yeah. And we appreciate and love him for that. But guys, let me tell you something. I remember when I was actually in banking mm -hmm. as a financial advisor. I had a sign in my office that said, a year from now, you're going to wish you made this decision today. If you get it, you get it. Mm -hmm. There are so many of you that are literally sitting on your hand, on your brass knuckles, and you're watching, and you have your toe in the water, and you, you like the, the keyboard research warriors, but you never pull the trigger. And then a year from now, you're going to think like, man, I wish I would have started in 2023. And you know what's going to happen a year from now? The money you have right now is enough for you to get into the game. Yeah. But you're going to wait till the June of 2024 when you want to get in the game. The game is going to pass you by. And so that's what you really need to fight against the doubt that you are inherently built with the fear that you have to get in the game. Think of how many of you would have never been married mm -hmm. if you didn't overcome your fear of not knowing how to dance, but asking the most beautiful girl at the, at the party if they would actually, actually want to have a dance with you. Mm -hmm. And that one dance turned into a lifetime of happiness for some of you. But for some, you never know. But at least you were in the game. You had that opportunity. You gave yourself a chance. But the more you sit on the sideline, and believe me, I love the well wishes that we get from you guys. But then the the, the message that makes me so sad, mm -hmm. when it, like it, not sad, it, it, it makes me feel conflicted. When people write on our social media posts, yeah. Tina, Grafton, you live in my dream. Mm -hmm. You're living my dream. Well, you know what? I had a corporate career. Tina had a corporate career. Why are we living your dream? Your dream is your own. The only person that can make it a reality, there's actually two components, yourself and God. 
If you get yourself right with God, you square yourself up properly, and you have your money, you have your plan, you've done your due diligence, you've done your research, you can join us in that dream. You understand? And the, the country is big enough. We give out this information freely yep. because the competition, you're not my competition, I'm not your competition. Because no matter what, I feel the more equipped that you guys are, the better our fellow brother Ugandan brothers and sisters are going to be, be, be by having this knowledge, understanding the entry point in different parts of the business, right? And reinvesting in agriculture on the continent, particularly here in Uganda, because I love this country. I'm partial to UG, you know? <laughs> I'm sure it's great in Gambia, mm. Zambia. By the way, my brothers and sisters out there in Burundi, mm -hmm. I will see you soon. I will see you soon. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I love Burundi. Mm -hmm. I love the Burundian people. People have been sleeping on Burundi for so long. Yeah. But in terms of what we're doing as a company, as a company, Burundi is a natural VF partner. So we'll be there soon of for a visit. And we'll see, hopefully what might be able to be done in that region. But wow. what else can you Guys, thank what, you what so much. What questions do you have? There are quite a lot of questions here. AIM Agriculture, I think you're very familiar with that. AIM Agriculture from, from Kenya. Okay. Which one? What's the question from AIM? No, no, he's uh -huh. watching us. We always watch the videos. Oh, yeah, yeah, AIM Agriculture, definitely. Yeah, yeah. we do watch the videos all the time. Then someone was saying, oh, they were asking, I think, the, but JK, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for loving us. Much appreciated. We really appreciate that a lot. Someone was saying, you guys can even open a consultancy and make money. You understand the market? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, guys. We do provide cons consultations, mm. but I still like to be out here with the people mm. because this is not all about money. It's mm. also about helping out your brothers and sisters. Because I feel that the information we put out there in the ether will always come back. Mm -hmm. And if this information, this video, this live stream, somebody can find this six months from now, a week mm -hmm. from now, you know, if this can help move someone from being on the mm -hmm. sideline to actually getting active into our industry, you know, that in itself is a blessing. Yeah. Because, you know, what we do in agriculture is, is this an essential Part of the economy you know like agriculture itself that ag sector in uganda and in many parts of africa that's like the 75 percent of the overall gdp right and in most of the countries in africa now if you are in the office and you're unhappy with what you're doing and you have family land or you have land or you have access to land do you guys know how many people that are currently suffering in kampala yeah. That have hundreds of acres of family land. In their villages. In their villages that have been passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. A lot of these ungrateful kids in Kampala True. don't even have the decency to go to the village to see what their grandfathers or their great grandfathers and grandparents have left for them. Mm -hmm. Where to the point where some folks may have like a thousand acres of land. And they haven't been back on that land for more than 20 years. And now more out of the, the 1,000 or the 500 acres, mm -hmm. they have four acres left that's not yet inhabited by squatters. Exactly. Because they just don't value land. They don't understand the value of land. It's a finite asset, you know, though, you know, the great-grandfather was a farmer who was able to actually sacrifice and send them to the best law school exactly. or the best business school. And now that they have their degrees, the idea of coming back to becoming a farmer is so repulsive to these people. But in reality, there are so many Dutch people in this country, German people in this country this that are coming here to buy land here that are setting massive farming projects here. I was speaking to one of our really close partners in Tanzania. Mm. Right now, if you go to Northern TZ, yeah. Southern TZ, I'm sorry. Some of the, uh, no, Northern TZ from, from, from my friend. Yeah. They are British 
farm, British corporation, um, British owned corporations that have set up shop in Tanzania. And I'm talking, these guys have planted between three to 5,000 acres of avocado. Some have planted between five to 10,000 acres of, of cashew nuts. And now they're adding even more in terms of macadamia nuts. Wow. This is why we always try to give you guys the keys to the kingdom, answers to the test, because <laughs> what, I, what I love our brothers and sisters, but we are masters at procrastination. That is true. That is so you funny. guys know what we share here is the truth, but many of you will literally sit on your couch and you know you hate your job, you hate your career, you've been stuck at the same level at your, in your profession for the past seven years. Here's the truth. If you haven't gotten a promotion over the last three years and you've actually been trying, chances are it's not going to happen. So you need to get out of that situation and make it happen. Many of us let the let let we like to say the white man comes and they take over everything. They can't take over anything if you already have it. I'm not a racist. I don't I love everybody. But the opportunity exists for all of us. True. But most of us just sit idle until they see like the Indian folks get into the sector or the white folks get into the sector or the Lebanese folks are getting into the sector and then we watch them do it. And they want to complain about it. Yeah. I don't want to hear it at this point. We, we've been giving you this information now for two years. Exactly. What are you waiting for? It's like what we were discussing the other day with, the, with Stephen and the wife. Mm -hmm. Remember how you know the Asians, Indians come in groups and... They really work together. They work together as a team to get something. But with us here, most of us in Africa, we want to be selfish with our projects selfish with whatever selfish with the money selfish with the knowledge you know the inability to put ego and pride aside uh -huh. and come together to build something greater, greater? for the greater good they, like we just don't seem to want to do that no but then you have people that come into this country with far less financial resources mm -hmm. than what we have in the diaspora and within a couple of years they are captains of industries Exactly. And when they get into those industries, you think it's hard in America, the quote unquote, the white man is keeping you down. Most of these guys, when they actually find a niche, whether it's, whether it's in the car business, mm -hmm. whether it's in the construction sector, when they get in, there's no room for us to get in. So the best way to secure your position, you get in where you can fit in now. And it's your responsibility to reach back and bring a brother with you, a brother and a sister with you. And then they have to keep the train moving yeah. by actually sharing the information, not being selfish with their knowledge. Believe me, I can charge, we can charge a healthy amount of money for more in-depth consultation. Yeah. We do that at times when somebody needs more in-depth, in specific targeted information. But I actually enjoy doing this just as much. Yeah. Just talking to you guys, just sharing what I've learned, what I've experienced on the ground, the opportunities that I've seen. Like, if I was not in Uganda, you wouldn't be seeing all this. No, I would never believe it. Exactly. Like, the, the stuff that I've, I've shared on this live stream, I would have never believed. If someone were to call me in America, in Africa, be like, hey, man, Grafton, do you know? We in a country with 50 million people, there's no dominant ice cream company. <laughs> I'll be like, dude, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Like in every country, there's a dominant player in ice cream. Mm -hmm. Why not in Uganda? And the raw materials are available. We have the raw materials here, by the way. That Milk is, is so cheap. That and most thing. people that are in dairy is at the entry level, where they're just milking the cows, collecting the milk in a bulking center, and just there. taking it. No, they sell it to fresh dairy or just or mama, yeah. right? Yeah. And then they just pasteurize that milk and they sell it to the masses. Nothing transformative is being done. Yeah. You might have 
three flavored yogurt from the big companies here. But in reality, you cross the border, you, know you go what? to Kenya. Yeah, it's even started of late. We're back in. It was just two flavors. Yeah, the only two flavors. But even the flavored kind of milk started now. Yeah. Like the flavored yogurts and all that. Yeah. And then we did. It was have, just plain. It was just like plain. Jesus. So things are transitioning. People are now getting to learn, but still it's on a small scale. And I have to apologize. Yeah, One of our brothers actually reached out to us from the Bahamas. It was like the worst timing. Hopefully you can find our contact to send me again. Okay. Um, they actually are ice cream artisans. But at the time when they reached out to us, I like we were literally in the process of going to Kenya oh, and I we were all that. over the place. So yeah. if you find this, please message me again because mm -hmm. I would love to actually have this conversation and see how we can facilitate something beyond just a conceptual you know, um, endeavor, mm -hmm. but to try to make something happen because it needs to happen. That is true. Someone was like, if you had a hundred thousand USD, what kind of business would you suggest to get into? <laughs> I would come to Uganda and open the biggest feeds company in Uganda. Wow. I would come to Uganda, open the biggest ice cream manufacturing in Uganda. Oh, I would come to Uganda and simply... Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're so passionate. <laughs> I'm just being real. You're being real because I, I, this has some these of the are things that the these are things that need that needs to be done here. Yeah. In fact, let me give you guys something so rudimentary. Mm -hmm. Those of you back home understand. Yeah. Kernels, curtain popper, or whatever it is. Just imagine we're in the country, guys. You can't find the sweet corn in America, in Uganda, in large quantities. That's number one. Mm -hmm. But the idea of having artisanal popcorn in Uganda does not exist. There's no Mrs. Phil cookies or pretzels or whatever you want to call it. We just Mrs. Smith cookies, Mrs. Phil's pretzels. Let me get my facts straight, right? All of this is wide open, but with a hundred thousand, there's not much you can't do here. But number one, make sure you partner with the right person. The right people. You should reach out to us, send us an email. Let's have some conversations because we definitely know people here on the ground that you might be able to do something with. If you're serious, we might be able to connect you with some folks. But there's so much that could be done. There's a lot. Yeah. Guys, just give us the thumbs up here, you know? So that's so many people get all this information here. You know, when we take long without even doing these live streams, we come with so much to give you. So I think you guys have really got enough information from this short video, short live stream here. But we really appreciate you guys so, so much. I think let's just read this guy's comment here. What is it? What He's is saying, it? I'm from Congo. I do live in the USA. I'm trying to do the same thing in Kinshasa. I hope that I will come to visit one day. I will come and visit you before. Okay, open your open my eyes. Well, Thank you. I'm glad. Mm. Of course, you're always welcome. Okay, I'm a female that asked about the 100. I hope you've got at least an answer to that. Yeah, so, send us an email. We can chat. We can chat. And in case you really need consultation, if you're serious about it, please reach out so that we can definitely you know, set up time for you so that we can do detailed consultation depending on what you're more interested in because, you know, most people have different projects they want to do in the country, different things they want to, you know, explore in this country because opportunities are here. It's there are too many. lots of opportunities. That's why when people come here, when people from outside countries come to Uganda, they just see opportunities. They see it here because we do lack so many things that need to be worked on. I'm not shaming my own country i'm so proud of of uganda and being ugandan but we do when you travel that's when you realize that eh, i think there's something missing i think we can do better so much yes we have the best climate best soil mm -hmm. the weather in uganda is the best that's what i should really tell you the irony here there are so many farmers in california that can no longer grow almonds because of all of the water restrictions on the West Coast. Mm. And yet you can come to Uganda and actually open an almond farm here 
produce 10 times more than what you can do in California and just ship globally. I mean, as an example, yeah. there's so much that could be done here. It's not even fair. It's not even fair sometimes. Especially, I know we've talked about this so many times, like our mangoes. Mangoes in this country, we do grow a lot. They go to waste. And do you know where it goes? It goes to Kenya. And where do we get the mango juice? From Kenya, Kenya to Uganda. Yeah. So people who process mango juice here, I have few. I don't even know any company. There's no significant company. I'm not even sure, but most there's of a few micro micro, micro companies micro that companies. are still making some good cash, but in terms of scalability, they haven't scaled to a point where they could be recognized as one of the 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 store worth brands exactly. in the country. They do exist, but they're micro, but yet they're still making a ton of cash. You know, the idea of actually just driving around seeing mango trees Pineapples. with hundreds of mangoes just underneath the tree. No one's even touching them. No the, touching the birds them. are having their way with it. The, you know, like, it's just here. That is true. And, and in fact, yeah, doing mango, pro like, natural juice. natural juice. There are a lot of companies here that are making juices in Uganda, but they're not real juices. They are synthetic. So if you want to come here, like my sister here with the 100K, you want to actually establish an actual natural juicing, uh, juice processing company here, you know, and that's the thing. When you do these things, you don't have to start that big. You can start very humble, from humble beginnings yeah. and end up becoming a juggernaut like two, three years from now. Exactly. So Then that's... also there's an opportunity in passion fruits. I was talking to one friend of mine. And they had done tomatoes, uh -huh. then they went to passion. Tomatoes is seasonal a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. whereby, and also it is more perishable with the tomatoes. So you have to be very, very critical mm -hmm. when you're doing tomato, tomato farming mm -hmm. than passion fruit. But passion fruits in this country, we love the passion in this country. And but guess what? Mm -hmm. Great point. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about the actual fruit. Yes. Right now, if you go to the supermarket to buy passion juice uh -huh. from either Ciceris or the other company. Yeah. I remember when I first came, one carton of Ciceris passion fruit juice mm -hmm. used to go for like 6,700 Ugandan shillings. Right now, a year and a half later, to buy one bottle of Ciceris passion fruit juice mm -hmm. starts at like 15,000. Yes. 15,000. Grafton, when you go to the local markets, yeah, like five, like five passions uh -huh. can be like for ten thousand. Amen. Five thousand. Amen. You understand? Yeah. So it is really very. It's, it's 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 growing. It is growing. Most people are not really putting more focus into it, but passion fruit farming is something anyone who really wants to do. You know, agriculture can really think about. That's actually a great idea. Good point. Yes, because it's very profitable. The market is there and it's not enough. It's not enough. There's no competition at all. So people who come into farming and they feel like, oh my God, I have competitors here and there. The cake is just there for us. There's a two, two last quick ones. Mm. There's no dominant players in terms of... Um, uh, habanero guys in I'm Uganda yeah. there's no company here that I'm aware of that grows habaneros on a large scale I think most of them come from Kenya mm -hmm. there's yeah, no okay. companies here in Uganda growing scotch bonnish peppers mm -hmm. there are no companies here currently in Uganda that I'm aware of that actually grow um, blackberries on a large scale mm -hmm. or more berries on a large scale I can't think of any company here in Uganda that actually apples. grow apples here. But the most, the saddest thing I found out, mm -hmm. do you know all the lemon that we end up using in this country, the majority are coming from South Africa? Yeah. That's we don't even have a lemon producing farm in Uganda. I'm just going to stop talking at this point. That's how crazy it is. That's how much could be done here, yeah. and um, and it's just wide open. It's wide open, and the environment is favorable. That is the truth. It's very favorable. And now for the people who who are out there, I know there are so many youth, especially in Uganda, who are crying out for the government 
oh, we need help. We need after university, there are no jobs. <laughs> jobs are scarce. The yeah. opportunities, you're the one to create the opportunity so that the government can come and help you as well. At least when you have something to show, they can come at least to help you from that. And crying, you're crying and you don't know what to do. You're waiting for them to give you a job. That is not possible. Let me just say this. It's funny you mentioned the government. Guys, when are we going to realize that the government is not here to save you? Yeah. The government... If every country is supposed to, yes, provide you with some sort of security, mm -hmm. provide you with roads, safe drinking water, right? And, but in terms of creating jobs that they're just going to hand out to you, even in America, it doesn't work like that. The majority of the jobs that are created are created in the private sector mm -hmm. by small and micro businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing here, you know? The environment will never be more perfect than it is right now. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you guys now, there's a reason why a good number of people are choosing to come to Uganda, including a great number of Kenyans are leaving Kenya to come to Uganda. Uganda, because there are opportunities here that this simply no longer, the lanes have been severely restricted in Kenya, but it's wide open here in Uganda, wide open in Burundi. You understand? And so if you're going to wait another three to five years, you shouldn't be complaining to anyone. Yeah. You shouldn't be talking about your bad luck five years from now. Ah, oh, that I was waiting, I was ready, but by the time I was getting to end this, oh, I had bad luck. Mm -hmm. No, you have to blame yourself for your inaction. I think in that's fact, someone is saying here, uh -huh. tomato ketchup production will be a winner in your A Uganda. mega winner here in Uganda. <laughs> Not just ketchup, actual tomato paste being made on the ground. Yeah. It's, and it's so needed here. Mm -hmm. Guys, I wish I had what they call ketchup here to show you. To show you it's better. some fluorescent pink looking thing. They call they call ketchup that is not People ketchup. People locally made the ketchup, the tomato sauce. We call it tomato sauce, and they work in the jerry cans. You know, for the street food. So yeah, People but it's not ketchup. It's something red and fluorescent. Yes. Yeah, it is true. not. It's not ketchup. Do you know what? But that opportunity is a great one. It's a great one. Do you know what? There's when I hosted someone, mm -hmm. and I gave them the the real ketchup. Mm. Then now are no more. You're gonna catch yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, which one is special? Mm -hmm. She was like, eh, this one is it from Uganda? <laughs> <laughs> this is quite different. This mm -hmm. is really nice. Like, eh, you see people rich people eating nice. <laughs> 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 Tastes like yeah. actual tomatoes. Yeah, just like real, yeah, the real thing. It tastes even much better. It's even sweeter uh -huh. than our local one here. Uh -huh. Because she had never really tasted the real ketchup. I was like, wow. Because I wanted her to also experience to see the difference as well. She was like, this is way better. This one is nothing. I cannot even go back to this one. I'll also invest money to go and get real ketchup from the supermarket. Which is great. So I wanted to answer the comment that Gigi also made. I'm packing um, soon, to, uh, focusing on my farm. On my farm. Well, congratulations. You know, you have to be here in order to make it. Mm -hmm. And guys... Another thing, too, I just wanted to point out here, and I, and in fact, credit to Seeds of Gold, I actually saw this okay. on Seeds of Gold a couple of weeks ago, where they actually profile a farmer okay. in Barada who's actually growing grapes, mm -hmm. and that's a very big grape growing region, yeah. and I was yeah. very happy to see it, mm -hmm. because in Uganda, the majority of the grapes you see in the supermarket come from Kenya. Yeah. Right? So, what the owner of that one farm that they featured, right, he's just basically been growing and they've just been selling to wholesalers, to the middleman, is that he's actually looking for capital to actually ultimately open his own winery. Wow. And I was, it, it gave me chills because to see someone to go that extra mile, at that, take that extra step. He actually expanded his farm over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. This was the second feature they did with him on Seeds of Gold. Okay. And he's, the farm just keeps growing bigger and getting better and better. Yeah. And now to get into processing, 
everybody know how much money there is in wine production. And even some of the most popular local wines here that people like to enjoy the most are being imported from Australia, from South Africa. From South Africa. Guys, these guys think yellowtail wine is good wine here because of the lack of access to actual quality locally sourced wine here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else we can share with you guys today, but just know that the opportunities are plenty. And if you have questions, just reach out if you're serious, because we're very busy people. We only we don't have time for the joke as Tina would say. <laughs> Oh, shout out to BGM Animals Breeding, our friend from from where? Um, Mitiana. Mitiana, yes. He's here. Yes, he's right here. That's my guy. Congratulations, man. Even Rosmo was here earlier. Right? Oh, my yes. boy Rosmo. I love Rosmo. Yeah, shout out to him. In fact, when we come to South Africa, Rosmo, I'm coming to see you. Mm. I'm coming to pick up my buck. <laughs> yes, he's a very good farmer for both. Tremendous. Oh my God, his yeah. goods look amazing. So nice. So, so nice. Yeah. I know most of you also tell us, oh, your guts look amazing. Thank you. We're doing, we're doing. We're doing, we're trying, but okay. Rosemo is definitely Fantastic. doing a phenomenal job as well. Yeah. yeah. And of course, for people who reach out to us from South Africa, where to source goods from. And Rosemo. Go to Rosemo. He's the best person. To he's read. one of the best, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. To really help you out in South Africa, Malawi. I've got messages from Malawi as well. Yeah, Rosmo is there yeah. for you. So you could reach out to Rosmo Farms. He's also on YouTube as well, so mm -hmm. that you can find his channel. Yeah, he's a wonderful guy, very mm -hmm. professional. Exactly. Definitely passionate about what he does. What he does. Yeah. So we love to see that. Yeah. Someone was asking about our cows, by the way. Here. The cows. Mm -hmm. Ah, the cows are coming, guys. We've been. We've been blessed with a female calf the other day. The other day was like, do you plan to improve your cattle herd with better genetics, even though you don't talk about them a lot, and you happen to know how many wind calves fit those airline crates? Uh, we don't know about the logistics, but we definitely, in fact, we have been improving our genetic line with our cows mm -hmm. because as our cows have delivered, We've actually used AI mm -hmm. to introduce a better quality um, um, uh, semen or specimen yeah. to, those, to those cows, right? And by the time they produce the second time around, we definitely will have enhanced genetics. But to be quite frank with you guys, we haven't really given much thought up until recently about enhancing our cows. Uh, in such a serious commercialized way, we've been doing it out of we. This we've been running a test market. Yeah. But at some point, we have to definitely see where that opportunity will take us because, you know, the country needs meat, and and we need milk, and so when it comes to the whole cattle world, it's very difficult to do both. Because either you're gonna go into the beef production. Or you're gonna go into the dairy production, and so we've been testing, you know, the breeds that we have. We try to enhance them. We actually have, you know, knock on wood, at least like six or seven that are currently pregnant yeah. with enhanced genetics in terms of um, specimen that will introduce to those cows, and so we'll keep you guys updated on them. But the flock is steadily growing. Yeah, it is. It's growing. I'm very happy about the progress. And we're enjoying the milk. Like right now, I think since the, the last two new birth, mm -hmm. we should have at least seven cows out of being milk right That's now. Being milk for the so month. our goats are enjoying the milk. The pigs. Our pigs are enjoying the milk. And thank you guys for buying Piglets from VF. Yeah. It's definitely been nice to actually share those genetics. Um, you know, it's hard for me to part ways with those animals. Mm -hmm. But we understand we are here to do things for the greater good. Yeah. But we really appreciate the love and support we get from everyone. Yeah, and of course, we still have a few piglets there. For those who are interested in getting them, don't share with most of them. When you share the prices, hey, they feel like, you know, it is too much. But if you're buying something that is going to benefit you, please do not share away because these are things we... We get you the real genetics here. Speaking of which, BLM, make sure you message me later on today mm. because I want to talk to you about the pellets. Yeah. That uh that we, we have this we have to discuss more about those, okay? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's saying thank you for following the job. Thanks for educating us. Valley Farm, you're doing a great job. You're the best <laughs> of the knowledge. Wow. Thank you, but you've also really done so much for the farming family. You're just an amazing person. Thank you so much for the knowledge as well. You really work so much on your farm. And we keep watching your videos as well. Yeah, BLM is doing great in Mitiana. In fact, as we grow the Value Farm Association, mm -hmm. he will definitely be one of the affiliated members mm -hmm. of the Value Farm Extended Family. Family, yeah. You know, in that part of Uganda, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we are looking for select partners mm -hmm. that embodies the VF spirit and energy that we're actually going to be flushing out that roster pretty soon. That is true. So we're taking applications for partners in the GOATS business. We're taking partners in terms of association partnership and the actual pork production part of the business. Same thing, ultimately, um, when we really start to hit the ground uh, in a serious way with poultry, um, particularly with meat, meat production yeah. and the, within the poultry sector. Um, and even aviary partners, actually, in terms of honey production. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a few good farmers who believe in the Lord's mission, who are ready to actually move the ball forward and actually put Uganda farming in that same echelon of South Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our brothers down there in Zimbabwe. That is true. Our brothers out there in Zambia who are definitely doing a fantastic job within the agri sector. So. And shout outs to the Goat Forum that we have. Yeah, the Goat Forum has been great. Dr. Huntington has been doing a good job there. Yeah. And um, the members for sharing information. Sharing information, helping. Yeah, for sure. Well. It's, it's definitely been a good resource. It has been a good resource you learn from, you know, and there's no being shy. If you have a problem, if you have just something. Just come and ask. You just come and ask. So shout outs to them. These guys have been a blessing to our community and also farmers in Uganda. Because supporting each other, being together, knowing how to solve problems is the major goal for us all farmers in case you really want to join farming you need to look out for all these groups live alone, alone research and everything but also look for fellow farmers that you can always you know look up to ask questions because if you don't ask anything guys it's going to be very difficult for you at your farm you you have to be ask, asking questions all the time if you don't know something ask if you're not sure of something ask for help as well there are so many people here who are very helpful, who can really help you as well. If you're not sure about, you know, the medication and all that, because, you know, we have vets in this country that are also not honest enough to us. Mm. So you have to be very careful with the people that you invite. You have, you have to lean on your fellow farmers yeah. for help because, trust me, no animal ailment is ever unique. Uh, the more you actually have a close network with your farmers... That's actually why we're actually really going to be working on the VF Farm Association. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, not every farmer start out with the resources to be able to have access to a vet 24-7, right? Mm -hmm. Not every farmer is going to be, you know, entering the space fully prepped and flushed out in terms of their, their procedures at their farm, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you know, as we come together to work as a unit... Right when we bring these additional farmers into our program, that we train everybody up to the level that we hope to actually get us working together. Because let's face it, guys, there are a lot of exports that we've been blacklisted. Mm. That we can't list, we can't ship many of our Uganda-made products to countries in Europe and true. other parts of the world because the standards have not been kept. Mm -hmm have not been met, they have not been kept, and a lot of shady folks has ruined our international reputation, reputation in terms yeah. of exports. And so by bringing together the association and partnering with a few real farmers that are serious about the job ahead, I believe as a unit, we can help find a path to actually re-enter some of the markets that we've been unfairly blacklisted in, right? Especially from shady folks in the past 
who did some really despicable things, but now it's gonna be up to us, the new generation. You out there in the diaspora, my friend here, mm -hmm. sitting in Mitiana, improving his goat herd. Goat herd. You understand? Like I love to see that, and you don't have to be the biggest farmer. Mm -hmm. We're just looking for the hardest working people serious. that are gonna be serious, that are gonna be honest, that actually wanna join our company to change exporting our products outside of Uganda, not just exporting to Kenya. And we love Kenya, we love Kenyans, okay? Mm -hmm. But we're talking about going beyond, beyond. because the money we get from Kenya is cool. But the, the same product could be shipped to Spain, could easily be shipped to the UK, could be shipped to Scotland, could be shipped to all parts of the European Union. And guess what? We can't access most of those markets, but together, if we put together a proper association, we train our people up, we share the knowledge, we share the wealth in terms of both knowledge and genetics amongst that circuit. And the idea is as we actually train those groups up, train those regions up, then it is their responsibility to identify other potential partners within those markets that they can then have applied to become a part of the VF Farm Association. Because we really, guys, we going for it, man. Yeah, we told you guys in 2022 mm -hmm. that 2023, we were gonna go all in. And believe me, stay tuned. Yeah, we shall be letting you know. We're gonna you. definitely update you guys on, a, on some major updates. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I will leave you guys with the following. For those of you that are seriously looking for real partners in the ag sector, we're here. Yeah. We have other affiliated partners in the oh, ground, on the ground mm -hmm. that are here making the sacrifice, making that ultimate all in, all cars on the deck. They're here in Uganda right now. So we're looking for people who are like-minded like us, like those other folks that we mentioned that are ready to take that next step forward. Why can't we be the next Hillshire? Mm -hmm. Why can't we be Purdue Farm with a conscience? You understand? Why can't we be Jimmy Dean again with a conscience? You know, like we can grow the brand. We can grow ag, especially in East Africa. You know, I hope when my time finally come on this planet that my family can look back and be proud of the work that we've been doing mm -hmm. on the ground here. All the people that we've tried to help. And I wanna make sure that our legacy continue to endure a hundred years from now. Mm -hmm. And it's only gonna take a handful of people to start building that castle brick by brick. That is true. That's all. Well, there's someone here who said, Wonderful and inspirational duo. I have my farm, but I'm trying to go business based on your ideas and plan. Next time when you guys come to Kenya, look for me. I'll give you your I'll give you your of my ranch in Nairobi, Kenya. That would be great. That would be great. We shall be in Kenya. In fact, we soon. are coming to Kenya. <laughs> we'll take you up on that offer. Mm -hmm. You make sure you send us an email. And uh, Tina, put the email in here for yeah, our friend here. You already put it? Put email. You send us an email, and then before we come to Kenya, we'll definitely yeah. reach out, and then we can plan something for sure. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, Grafton. Wow, Hopefully thank you. See many more. Let's hope, let's pray. And God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> bless He's, your pockets. He's so silly. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, I think for this live stream, we've really done something. I know we can't exhaust each and everything here. There's a lot. When we come here, we come with experiences because we are not talking out of, you know, Not theories. Theory. These are actual yeah. world, world application. Yes, this is what we faced as farmers from the time we started our farming journey. And you know what we faced in the country? Grafton here has been in this country for now two years. He's learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Now is your, he should be your best friend here. So if you're moving <laughs> to Uganda, contact us. So contact that's, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Mm -hmm. For those of you that are in the diaspora, guys, very quick update. Listen, many of us, when we're coming here, 
whether you come into Uganda or wherever, but I can only help you here because this is where we are, right? By being here locally, I've actually amassed some really cool contacts and met some really wonderful people that can help facilitate your transition from the diaspora back to UG, especially for those of you that's been out of the country for like almost like 40, 50 years. Yeah. And for those of you that have never lived here. So if you need help with any of that transitional that's stuff, stuff, reach out to us on that same email and we can definitely actually point you to some people that can okay. help you facilitate your transaction, your transition back home because you know, there's one company on the internet you're going to find if you Google, you know, expat services in Uganda. I think we lost, oh, oh we yeah, lost connection. Yeah, the connection. <laughs> um, yeah, but what we wanted to say, just if you want, if you need help with that as well, reach out to me. I'll definitely come, uh, point you guys in the right direction in terms of contacts. Yeah. Well, Thank so. you so much, guys. I think yes. That is it for tonight. We hope next time we come back, pray for us to be coming back for this live streams. <laughs> I'm so guilty about this, and I know Grofin is going to blame me about this. He was no comment. <laughs> he wasn't even blaming me I about they were this. I thought attack you today. He thought you guys are going to be like, yeah, you always promise to come here and talk to us, but you never do so. But it has been busy for us as well. It's been very busy. Very busy. Like the last few months, it's not been easy to really do, and even consistent what consistent videos as well i think we've really seen the reduction of the number of videos that we upload but we are working on it we are going to come back so that we can definitely give you more updates about the farm what is happening on the farm as well because we're here to share with everyone out there to just inspire we are not here to brag no we are sharing the knowledge we want to help other people as well as we also learn from other farmers as well because we do not only do farming on our own we also visit other farmers to learn from them to get knowledge from them, get their experiences so that we can also use at our farm. But everything that we share on YouTube, guys, it's out of experience. It's out of what you guys really see. We don't, you know, lie. We are really being honest with you guys. Like from the beginnings, you've seen where to where we are right now. You've seen our growth, how everything moves. At least we try our best to be open with you guys because we want farmers that to be better farmers as well and also with modern farming i know most of us in uganda in particular we were more we were farmers even before we had so many farmers in this country but more for domestic not for commercial basis but now we are trying to upgrade and also for people to get something for their own families not only for domestic use whereby you only feed your family and that's it yet you go to the garden from morning to sunset every day but you're not earning out of it, you're just feeding yourself. So we are trying to make sure that, you know, most farmers in this country also learn some skills from, from the videos that we share so that they can also get the ideologies that, you know, I can do better, I can upscale, I can, you know, scale up my, 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 my projects at the farm, I can do better, I can get good genetics as well, so that I can be better. And this is to all farmers in Africa, all over the world. We have farmers in the Philippines, from India, like all over the world, they always reach out to us and they feel like, you know, they really appreciate our knowledge. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for always subscribing. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And also before we even go, guys, we also have a shop that you can go and also be proud of who you are as a value farm family member, right? Hey, here. get some merch. I forgot about that. <laughs> exactly. Get some merch from there. You can shop and get something from there. We have mugs, we have kids' shirts adults then the hoodies caps everything is there so you go to the shop so that you can shop something as well then also go to our social media platforms on tiktok at least we post them more often go and check the behind the scenes some of the things that we don't really bring out on our youtube videos you can definitely go there and you know see catch up with us as well that side and also get a little bit inspired and also fun of course then what else what else tell a friend to tell a friend is there anything you want to tell them for that night birthday man goodbye and thank you for the birthday messages thank you for so the well wishes as well. yes oh guys thank you so much have a blessed night thank you thank you thank you thank you and before you click off like the video bye bye kwaheri oh au revoir <laughs> Je suis là pour l'onde.